Welcome to our review on sampling techniques. So the first thing we actually need to know about then are a few key terms that we need to know the meanings of to understand what the questions will be asking us. So what we've got here are four key terms to do with our sampling. The first one is distribution, and that's just talking about where species are found over the total area where they could occur. The population are the number of organisms of a given species within that area. A relationship is an interaction between species in the same area. And finally, when we're talking about sampling, which is obviously a key part of this little review session, then that's about counting a small number of the total population so that we can study it. So rather than having to count every single individual in a large population, we just count a small number of them in order to give us an idea about the total population. The next thing we need to consider is really why we carry out this process of sampling. And there are a wide range of different reasons for it. First of all, it's allowing us to actually collect some accurate data about where organisms are found and also what organisms there actually are present. So we might do this by collecting the organisms themselves or we might just record them in situ. It also allows us to collect data fairly and it will allow us to collect reliable data. So when we're actually carrying out the sampling itself, we could use a range of different techniques. So you need to know these different techniques and where we'd actually use them, along with a basic overview of how to carry them out. So the first one, one of the most common ones, one that you've probably done at school, is using a quadrat, which you can see in the left hand side there. Now, quadrats are a square, usually made of metal. Sometimes they are just a square without a grid in, others do have a little grid marked up inside them. And the key thing about them is that they have a fixed area. Usually the ones used in school are half metre square, but you can get metre square and so on. The idea behind our quadrat is it allows you to place it down in the area you're sampling, and then you count whatever's within that fixed area. Second one is using a pooter, which is in the bottom left there. Now, the pooter allows us to collect small insects. So what you've actually got there are two straws, one with a little mesh covering, which is very important, and the other one without. So you place the one without against the little bug that you're trying to collect, place the straw with the mesh covering inside your mouth, and then you suck in. The little bug then ends up in your collection jar. Obviously very important only to suck on the one with the mesh, otherwise after you've collected a couple of bugs, suck on the wrong straw and you get a mouthful of bugs instead. Third one down, the pitfall trap is in the bottom right there. So this is where you've actually buried something like a jar just underground and then you put a little roof over it so it can be plastic, could just be a bit of stone because what we find then, little ground crawling creatures, they'll walk along and then fall into the jar underneath. We put the roof on top to avoid the issue of it filling with rainwater and the animals obviously dying. Fourth one, the sweep net is in the top right there. This is what we'd use to collect things like butterflies and grasshoppers. And as the name suggests, what you do is you just sweep the net through the area and then they get caught in the bottom allowing you to catch them later on. Fifth technique is something called a transect line. So this is where you would do sampling, for example, up a beach. So what we're actually doing there is we take a tape measure or a bit of rope and then you run it along a set area. So as I said, it could be from the actual sea up the beach. It could be from under a tree into a more light area because these allow us to examine how plants will change and organisms change as a factor changes. Next one, kick sampling. So our kick sampling is where we're going to look at river banks or river beds. So as the name suggests, you basically kick the edge or the bottom of the actual stream and then you hold a net downstream. Any organisms that you've just stirred up by kicking, they get caught in the net and then we can sample them. And finally, the tree beating, as the name suggests, we're going to basically beat a tree. So what you do is you get a big white cloth underneath the tree stretched out and then you're going to shake or hit the tree in order to dislodge any of those little invertebrates that we find. They will then fall onto the white cloth and then you can obviously collect them using a pooter or just count them if there aren't that many. So what we've done there is we've got a range of different techniques of collecting various organisms. Now it's all good and fine collecting them, but in order to actually understand what we've got, we need to be able to identify them. And the way we do that is by using something called a key. 
So what we actually do there is we're going to look at the organisms we've collected, look at what characteristics they've got, and then using one of these two types of key, we can identify them. So the two types of key we've got are a numbered key, which you can see in the bottom right there, and a spider or branched key in the bottom left. So the way our spider or branched key works is it's a series of yes or no questions. So what we actually find is you literally look at the plant that you've got there in this example and you have a little look. Does it have broad leaves? If it does, you go to the broad leaf side. Then you have a look. Does it have a ragged edge or a smooth edge? And then you go down to the correct bit and you just keep following that little line down until eventually you end up with the name at the bottom. So nice and simple, only very quick questions, yes or no, or simple choices, broad leaves, narrow leaves, and you end up with your example at the bottom. The numbered key, slightly different layout, but the same principle. What we have there is kind of like one of those choose your own adventure books you might have read as a child. But you've got number one gives you your first question. So you can see if the leaves are narrow, you go to question two, whereas if the leaves are broad, you go to question three. And then you just keep going through following the instructions based on what you see until once more you end up with the final organism name. So a key technique that we would use in conjunction with something like the sweep nets is something called the capture recapture technique. So this will allow us to actually take a sample and then multiply it up to get the total population within a larger area. So what we do here is we go out, we take our sample using whatever technique that we've decided is appropriate for the organisms. We count how many organisms we've collected and then you mark them. And the key thing about when we mark them is that it's got to be in a way that's not going to basically cause them to die more than the ones that are unmarked. So don't put bright pink nail polish on the back of a grasshopper because surprisingly it's going to stand out to the birds a little bit more. Once you've done that, you then re-release them. And then after a certain period of time, and that obviously is up to you to decide, you then go back to the same area. You use the exact same technique for actually collecting the organisms. And once you've done that, you've got your second sample. From that, you're going to count the total number of organisms, the numbers that are marked and the numbers that are unmarked in that second sample. What we then do is we record those figures and then we use this equation in the middle there. The population size is the number in the first sample times the number in the second sample divided by the marked ones in the second sample. So you need to remember that equation because I don't always give it to you. So first sample times second sample divided by those that were marked. There are a couple of things that we are basically making an assumption on at this point. First assumption we make is nothing dies in the interim. So between our two samples, no organisms have died through other means. And secondly, that there is no immigration or emigration of those organisms. So none are either leaving the area or coming into the area. So just bear those two assumptions in mind. The last thing we really need to consider when thinking about how to carry out sampling is the actual way we're going to do the sample. So we've got two choices. You can either do what's called random sampling or you can do non-random sampling. So random sampling is, as the name suggests, where we're not selecting where we put things. The whole idea behind this is to remove any kind of bias. Now, I'm sure that if you went out with the quadrats onto the school field and your teacher told you to go and take samples, then there were a fair number of you probably thought, oh, I see some daisies over there. And you wandered over and dropped the quadrat on that area to make it so that you actually had something to count rather than just grass. That's not random. So the way we set up for random sampling is we use a grid. So just using two tape measures, as you can see at the bottom there, you just set out a grid and then you can use a random number generator to create coordinates. And that tells you where you're going to place the quadrat. So that means that you're not selecting it. It gives you a non-biased way of collecting your sample, which will give you a more accurate representation of the populations within a larger area. Once we've actually collected our samples doing this, obviously we've only got it for a small area. So if you were to do 10 quadrats, for example, that were half meter squares, you've got a five meter square sample. Now, the field that you're sampling is probably much larger than that. So the way you then work that out, if they were to ask you for the total population, 
is you work out the number of organisms within that small area, your sample area, and then you just have to multiply it up to be the same as your total area. The other option is to use non-random sampling. So this is where we actually want to study how the distribution changes over a distance. So this might be that we're looking at how the distribution of organisms changes as we go away from the sea up a beach. It might be that we're looking to see how the distribution changes when we're moving away from the shade of a tree into the sunlight. So what we do here is we again have our measuring tape, which we're going to run along the area that we're sampling. And then what we do is we'd say every meter, every two meters, we're going to place the quadrat and then count what's present within there. So it then gives us that little fixed point that we go all the way along our transect line and we count what's present in there. So then we can identify where we've got the different organisms and then we can also correlate between certain factors. Hopefully at the end of this revision video, you now know the names of the different sampling techniques and how to actually use them. You can also talk about why we carry out sampling rather than creating a count of the whole area, as well as being able to calculate using capture recapture and also the difference between our random and non-random sampling and where we would use them.